All right, now, so, uh, yeah, moving on to uh, our next uh, conversation, we see investors are facing uh, the triple whammy of geopolitical conflict with Russia and Ukraine, persistent inflation, and uh, rising interest rates. How would all of these shape uh, individual and institutional investors? Joining us uh, right now is uh, Ayode Jebo, Head Retail Investment, uh, Chapel Hill. Denham, great to have you on the program. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me, lad. Yeah, so, you know, with the recent, you know, ups and downs, you know, in, in uh, global markets, how do you think this will shape uh, investors' sentiment in 2022? Okay, thank you. Uh, good question. And I think I would like to just classify the investors into two. We have the savvy, which I'll call experienced investor, that have seen these uh, ups and downs in the market, and it's really no new to them. So in terms of their reaction to the market, will be totally different from those that are new to the market. So for those that are very experienced and how I feel it will shape their sentiment is that uh, it's always um, based on, it's always uh, good to keep calm when market is volatile. Uh, you, you, need to, uh, you need to take your time because it's proven over time that market will always rebound. Uh, if you look at the analysis, you look at the S&P 500 in the last 50 years, market will always surpass its last high. So for the savvy investors, they would have been used to that. They see these ups and downs as opportunity to dollar cost average. And for the new investors, what I would advise is uh, you should keep calm during this period of volatility. This is the time to get into good stocks and own them for long-term investing. Trading is always very tough during this time, and it's good not to trade, not to be active during this period. Looking at long-term investing, investing is what I would recommend for any investor within this period, so that you, you acquire stocks that, I will see stocks that have been beaten by over 50, 60%, and when you check their financials, they are still very strong and they, are, they, are, uh, they still have potential for growth. So. By and large, uh, sentiment will be negative, but it's always good to stay calm during periods of um, volatility. Yeah, well, not easy, you know, staying calm, you know, with wild swings, you know, in the equities market, and we're seeing uh, commodities uh, soar to uh, uh, new highs. Uh, but, but what uh, classes of assets do you think, you know, investors should be looking at at this time? Okay, thanks. And I'll, I'll, I'll believe that uh, for the domestic investors, uh, what I would recommend is their portfolio should be 50% in Naira and 50% in dollar denominated asset at this point in time. And for the 50% in Naira, I would recommend for the conservative investor to have about 30% of that in fixed income and have um, about uh, 20, the balance of 20% in stocks with high dividend yield. So you can set a base of about, it's above any uh, stock that can give you 8% and above uh, dividend yield. You can buy into them. And coming to the dollar at side, it, you can also, I would recommend 20% of that 50% uh, to go into uh, dollar mutual funds. And if you have the capacity to buy euro bonds, there are a lot of African euro bonds that are trading at very attractive rates. Uh, you, can, you can take them, for instance, you see, yes, it may look high risk. Um, the Ghana, for instance, you see some trading at 16, 18% yield. And we believe that the crisis would, once crisis normalized, there would, um, crisis would rise. And the other 30%, uh, we've seen the, the for foreign stocks, a lot of those stocks, like I said earlier, have been down by close to 60, 70%. But there are still a lot of potential for, for them. You look at the, the likes of those that are into electric vehicles, we know with the current geopolitical tension uh, and crisis in, in Ukraine, we, can, we know that uh, a lot of the Euro countries are also, and also even the US are trying to reduce their dependence on fossil fuel. And it means that they will be focused on renewables. So those stocks will present opportunities as, uh, as, we, as we go along. We also know that stocks were beating this year as a result of expectation of Fed hike. We saw that 25 basis point increase this week. Uh, the uh, Bank of England also increased yesterday to so 0.75. So that has caused a, a major decline in some of these stocks. And it's, this is the time that they can also position. It's safer to buy when prices are really very low and have potential for growth. 
And, you know, the, the battle, you know, against inflation raises on. We're seeing central bankers uh, raising rates uh, globally. How do you think investors can actually protect, you know, their investment against the impact of inflation? Okay, thanks. This is a very interesting question. And the first thing I always like to say as a finance coach is that doing nothing will make you worse. So if you cannot beat inflation, try to breach the impact. So if depending on your risk appetite for very conservative investors, yields may be low in treasury bills, you have alternatives like commercial paper that offers higher rates. And when you look, do those calculations, discussing investors, it may not be very encouraging. But once you understand that, if you don't do anything, you leave your savings in your account earning zero percent, inflation will, will make you worse off. So when you imagine the last inflation rate of probably 15.7 percent, if you just do the analysis, it means if you have saved one million in the last one year, that would have declined by about 157,000 naira. So if you are able to invest in safe investment like treasury bills at about 4%, or you go to commercial paper, they're also very safe at 8 9%, some as high as 13%, then you are able to bridge that gap. So it's the mentality now is to see how do you want to reduce the impact. And for those that can take a lot of, tolerate a lot of risk, this is also the time to get exposed to a lot of foreign stocks. You look at the S&P in the last um, 10 years, the average return is about 17.7%. That's dollar return. So beyond the adjustment that we made, when you say adjustment in Naira, it means you are up in Naira terms. So I believe that there are opportunities that are less risky, that you have control over, that you can put in your fund. So mentality would have to change and you need to know that inflation is real and would impact on your savings and investment if nothing is done. Yeah, inflation, very, very real. But, you know, a, a report showed that Ponzi schemes are prominent, you know, in a period of low interest rates and uh, high inflation. How can investors avoid being scammed, you know, at these times? Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, you, are, you are very right that uh, the Ponzi schemers, this is the time they take advantage of investor psychology because some investors would look at it investing in 90 day treasury bills at 1.3 percent they would they won't try that and they would look for other opportunity but the best way so that you you don't lose your hard end savings or hard end income is for you to be very mindful and ask questions first thing is that you would see about ponzi scheme is they give you guaranteed return uh, and it's out of. We just spoke about um, the average yields for fixed income. When you even look at bonds, the highest you get for long-term bonds is about 13%, 13-14%. So when you begin to see rates that are significantly higher than that and it's guaranteed, then you should ask a lot of questions. And if you have to do it, just put what you know you, you can afford to lose. Secondly, most of the Ponzi schemes are unregistered. You have the SEC website where you can uh, confirm companies that are registered with the Securities and State Commission. You can also confirm with the CBN. So you need to also consider that. Uh, thirdly, you would see that for most schemes, they will want you to bring in people before you can be able to reap um, significant return. So that also shows that um, they are doing, they are trying to take funds. It's uh, robbing Peter to pay for, trying to take funds from new investors and to pay um, old investors. So, and uh, and lastly, you should also see when their business model is very complex. When someone is trying to explain to you how they make money and you can't understand it within five minutes, then you should run or you should limit your risk. So once you take this into consideration and you take greed out of it and you remember you can lose all. So if you, if you have to do it at all, put what you feel you can, um, what you feel you can lose. But it's, also, it's always good when you look at period of low interest rate don't last for long. You, you can try to weather the storm and wait, and you would also always see that interest rate would also go on the high side within a short period. So if I, if I don't understand it in five minutes, uh, I, I run away, and uh, most of these uh, new investing uh, options take longer than five minutes to actually understand. But, you know, it, it, this is a time of the, they call it the year of the squeeze, rising prices. What's your outlook for inflation in the next few months and how should investors actually position at this point? Okay, thanks. 
uh, it's not uh, looking pretty good. Uh, when we look at with the hike in global oil prices, uh, beyond uh, uh, 12, which is a PMS that is deregulated, uh, that is regulated, other 12 are not. Uh, the, the diesel, the gas are not, and the cost of production have increased, which has also impacted on cost of transportation. All this would impact on cost of goods. Uh, and you also want to look at uh, the major uh, downside. You also look at the expected hike in electricity tariff. That would also impact on the cost of production. So we believe that inflation rate will continue to increase. There's also that food inflation uh, because of insecurity that we would see, and also the impact of exchange rate on imported food. So by and large, it means that investors need to position. So if you, you need to be, increase your risk appetite. So when I say increasing your risk appetite, it means that um, trying to take a bit of risk in investment. So when you look at, uh, for instance, some may be so comfortable with treasury bills, which is around 4.1%. That's government issued. But in period of no interest in the environment, corporates take the advantage to issue, um, to issue uh, commercial paper but for them to be able to, which is cheaper compared to when they take loans from the bank. You, it's, it's good to take advantage of that. And I will always say for commercial paper, don't also be carried away by high interest alone. They all have ratings and you can spread your risk. Diversification is one of the made good and very good strategy in investing. You diversify. Even if you see that it's very high, you can reduce the limits that you put into it. So that will help, help you to reduce the impact of inflation on, on, on your investment because we believe that inflation will still remain on the upside uh, given a lot of the downside risk. Right. Every investor looking for that uh, a sweet hedge against uh, inflation at this point. Uh, Jabo, Head Retail Investment Chapel Hill. Dan, I'm always great to have you on the program. Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay.